Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. So in this video, I'm going to show you two of my concrete hacks. Two things that make pouring my floors a lot easier. The first one is right here, using this concrete tremie. Now if you don't know what a tremie is, it's, it's just like a, we call it a boot. We hook it on the end of the chute. It's got this long rubber sleeve that goes on the end of it, the tremie. And then it helps you just guide the concrete wherever you want so it doesn't just drop right out of the chute and splatter all over the place. We use this thing a lot. As you can tell, it looks pretty old. But it just makes pouring concrete floors a heck of a lot easier, especially when you're pouring right over the top of a wall like this. So hack number one is using this concrete tremie. And you can see Darren's kind of running the tremie. And right there is a really good picture of it. Now you can get these right on Amazon. So you go on Amazon. I'll have a link for it in the description below. And if you've never used one of these, you know, they're not very expensive. I think you can get them on Amazon for about 140 bucks. And I've had this one for years. I don't even know how many years. Probably 15 years. So it's last. they last a long, long time. You can see we got it hooked right on the end of the chute right there. Um, and then we just drop it in wherever we need to. And it just saves us, you know, it's, we, as you can see right in the corner of the foundation back there, we have a 10-foot chute. I don't even think we used it on this job. We just used the tremie pretty much. So actually, it's probably an 8-foot chute. So now what we're doing, we, we got the second truck in here. We got the first truck all dumped out. We're getting this screeded. And we're going to just screed this by hand today just because it's, it's not like a huge house or anything. So we'll just grab right onto the screed and bring it down by hand. We screed, this is what we call wet screeding. So we screed right off wet pads. We don't need any 2x4s or grade stakes or anything like that. And that's just the way we were taught. Now I was, I was uh, hired on this one just to come in and pour and finish. I didn't have anything to do with the prep, anything to do with the specs. So I just order the concrete and we pour it and then we power trial finish it nice and smooth now we are using uh 3500 psi mix today with microfiber in it so it's got fiber mesh for reinforcement all my concrete i order also has a additive called uh it's a water reducing additive so it's a chemical additive that allows us to pour a pretty loose slump without adding water so it makes for a really nice workable mix without weakening the mix by adding more water to it. So we got a, another good section of the floor dumped out. This is what we like to do. We like to dump out quite a bit of concrete and then get it screeded down. You can see how well that tremie works. Now I'll have my second hack coming up here at the end of the video, so make sure you hang out for that. That's another really cool thing we do that helps make important concrete a lot easier. Now if you want to learn how to pour and finish concrete like we do, we do all kinds of different types of concrete. Stamp concrete, epoxy floors, concrete repair. Um, you've got to join my private membership, the Concrete Underground. Now, I'll have a link for that down in the description too. So if you want a higher level of learning, you know, just join the Concrete Underground. I'll be in there. A lot of training videos in there so you can learn how to do concrete. Very, very similar to what we do. So once we get a, a certain section screeded, then we got to bull float it. And the bull float, what that's doing is that's just pushing down the aggregate, bringing up some paste. So we got a nice smooth finish on the surface. And we want a nice smooth finish on the surface so we can, when it comes time to power trial, it makes power trialing just a heck of a lot easier. And with the mix we use, it basically means just pushing that bull float down and pulling it back, and that's enough to get it nice and smooth. If your mix isn't as, as uh, nice to both loaded ours, you may have to push it down and back two or three times to get a really nice finish. But usually with us, it's down and back once, and then we set over and both load the next piece. You can see how we call, we call that kick screeding. So we actually kick our feet and fill, the, fill in our footholes as we screed. Now we're getting the big part of this second half of this house dumped out and you watch, my second hack is coming up right here. So I take the end chute off, turn it over, 
and then I hook it right back on. And then I can use that to go back and forth and guide the concrete right where I need it. So when you're pouring over a wall like this, that's another simple hack you can do just to make pouring a little bit easier, make pouring a little less messy because the concrete's not going to splatter if it has to drop very far. You can see how it comes out of the chute and it hits that one. And then I can move that chute back and forth a little bit because it's, it's hanging on those nubs, kind of like a hinge. And it just makes pouring right over the wall a lot easier. You could do that for footings too, I suppose, if you're pouring down in a hole somewhere. You know, Darren and Luke are over there. They're going to finish straight edge in that section. There's a deep like beam in the middle of this floor. We call it a haunch, but it's a, almost as tall as our boots. You can see Luke's boots. I almost, you know, Abby just stepped out of it right there, but they're going to get down into that thicker part. Darren's coming out of it right now, and they got to set over it. So whenever we screed through something like that, we got to be a little extra careful because you, it tends to either want to sag a little bit if you go too fast, or it t tends to want to like bulge up a little bit, and you'll have a little hump there. So you just want to make sure you go through it nice and slow, set back out of it and then pull the straight edge back through it so you got a nice flat section right there to finish. You can see how the guys want to make sure there's plenty of concrete there so they're pulling back extra concrete. We never want to have that low as we're straight edging. Now I'm using my, my big mag, I call that a Darby to mag under that pipe. Let's see how nice and fluid that mix is. That's probably like a six and a half, seven. And if you take that water reducer out of that, that's probably like a three inch slump. And slump is a measure of how wet or dry the concrete is if you don't know what slump is. Typically, without a, without a water reducer, you don't want to pour much more than maybe a four or a five slump, which is which is actually, you know, pretty pretty stiff, pretty dry. We like it up here around a, between a 6 and a 7, so it's nice and fluid, really easy to work with, easy to screed, easy to bull float, and, you know, just makes pouring a concrete floor a lot easier. So that's why we use that water reducer. Now, it does add, you know, a couple bucks extra per yard, but when you pour every day like we do, it just makes your job a lot easier. Now Darren and Luke are going to finish that piece up. You can see how they, they could step right out there. And Luke's kind of magging out any extra, just dumping it over the side. Then they're going to finish with the screed right there. And then I'm going to show you how Darren's going to finish bull floating this thing. But like hack number one, like I said, is using that tremmy. And then hack number two is switching that chute over, just turn it, turning it 180 degrees and hooking it the other way. So if you've never used though either one of those for pouring concrete, then hopefully you just learned something new today. Let me know down in the comments if if you've ever used one of one of those or both of those, or if you've never used any of those and you learned something today. That would let me know down in the comments. So now Darren's reaching way out there to bull float and finish this off. We have a, a knucklehead on the end of that bull float where all you need to do is just twist the handle to change the pitch on the bull float. So the knucklehead also makes bull floating really easy. Without that knucklehead, you'd have to lift the handle way up to pull it back, and then you push it kind of down to, to pull it out so you're not digging into the concrete. So again, guys, if you want my higher level of training videos, then the Concrete Underground is the place to be. Link for that down in the description. If you're new and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you like these kind of videos, man, please smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one, guys.